Welcome back to another episode of Dungeon Hammer, brought to you by One Mind Syndicate. I am your host, Chris Schwann, and I'm here with my two co-hosts, Docile Creature and The Sound Alchemist. The Sound Alchemist and Docile Creature have been making me laugh all day. <laughs> Sound We're al- not tickling him. But before we get into that, I wanted to let you guys know that today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Audible is offering our listeners a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrials.com slash one mind syndicate and browse the unmatched selections of audio programs. Download a title for free and start listening. It's that easy. Go to audibletrials.com slash one mind syndicate. Link in the description. Yeah, Sound Alchemist. Yeah. What are we doing today? Today we're talking about Star Wars once again. Obviously, we're all on the high of episode nine, the end of the saga, perhaps? Asterisk. Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> but yeah, lately we've been watching Star Wars, talking about Star Wars, so we thought, why not continue it with having a D&D topic um, around a campaign that focuses on Star Wars. So a campaign inspired by the entire Star Wars genre? If you don't feel like playing an actual Star Wars RPG and you only <laughs> know how to play D&D, how do you do it? Right. So the thing is... Star Wars has so many races to pull from, so many scenarios, different planets, different ecosystems. Yep. You can literally pick whatever and just say, it's Star Wars. Yes. Now let's tackle the very big problem with Star Wars Universe and D&D, the laser gun. Yes. How would you incorporate a laser gun into D&D? And this docile creature is the expert at this because he is the weapon uh, creator extraordinaire. <laughs> Check out our, our podcast on, uh, we created Darth Vader, we created... Uh, Darth Maul, Yoda. Yeah. And, and he actually... And a had, surprise character, you guys gotta watch it. Yeah, yeah, watch it. And uh, how I failed miserably on creating a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> you did. So, so how would you create a laser gun? Or just a gun in general in d and I think there's two ways. One way, if you want to have guns in your game, actual guns, there's rules in the DMG for guns. laser Like from uh, pow- like powder weapons to modern weapons to laser guns. Mm-hmm. They're, in the, they're in the Dungeon Master's Guide. You can just literally just put those in your game. What are those? Not that we haven't read the, the DMG, but what are those? Uh, I don't. I mean, I know oh, they have like either. a blaster pistol because I've never used them. Oh, okay, okay. But they have a blaster pistol, a rifle. Mm-hmm. There's there's a bunch of rules back there. Okay. I mean, they do a lot of they do a lot more damage. Mm-hmm. It's all radiant, isn't it? I believe so. Okay. Uh, there's like uh, thermal detonators type things, I believe. Sweet. Uh, so you can literally just plug and play. Mm-hmm. But depending on what level your characters are, it might be a little much. Like if you start level one. One blaster shot could just completely annihilate your character, which, I mean, if that's the theme you're going for, maybe it'll make your players be a little more cautious. Yeah. Another way to do it is just reskin. Make uh, heavy crossbows, light crossbows, and um, light crossbows, quote unquote, laser guns. Like, yeah. They shoot mm-hmm. lasers. Uh, I don't know. I mean, you could do the same thing for bows, but I feel like the easier. The easier way to do is just use crossbows. Yeah, and, and the awesome thing about doing just reskins is that when you look at Star Wars or you watch The Mandalorian, you kind of feel like they get hit by laser shots a lot, yeah. and they are okay. Yeah. And, I mean, you could, if you really want to get into it, you could say, yeah, it's because their armor is that strong. Uh, same thing, whereas if, if you were to get hit by a ranged weapon multiple times, you could just say, yeah, I got that, that character... Uh, is just like heavily armored i mean i mean in star wars i feel like the only person we've ever seen deflect lasers is the mandalorian yeah because yeah. stormtrooper armor doesn't seem to do anything it's like why even wear the armor yeah. literally ewoks throwing rocks <laughs> yeah. kills them yeah. or, or uh cheer it hitting him with a stick in yeah. the head it's like oh you're dead mm-hmm. um so so in other words when as a dm going into it uh, into a sci-fi world, like, don't be afraid of the guns. Is, is basically what we're saying. They're yeah. not as uh, it's not tough to work around them as you think. Just keep in mind that they do a lot more damage if if you're using the ones from the Dungeon Master's Guide, mm-hmm. right? Or you just like I said, do something as simple as just reskinning. Now the Sound Alchemist did bring up a good point too in saying that um, every single Star Wars either uh, series or or movie has uh, showcased like different planets. Um, where if you are a level one or you do have a level one party, 
you could just throw them into like a very primitive world um, and then just run a campaign in a very primitive world set in the Star Wars universe where maybe at the end of, the, of, of your little story arc, you meet someone uh, like a Jedi or, or a, um, what, are the, what is the Mandalorian? His, his race? Mandalorian. No, that's his religion. Right. What's what is he though? What's they his... haven't really oh. said it, but I mean, he looks human. Human. Yeah. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. He's, but, yeah. He's so, human. just like there is no Jedi race, yeah. there is no Mandalorian race. But you just meet like someone of that kind of standing. Mm-hmm. Right. So something a downside I think you could have playing a if you're gonna stick closely to Star Wars. Is that usually a planet is all one biome, like a whole yeah. desert planet, a whole forest planet? That's true. That could get kind of boring. So if you're gonna play in a in a Jedi or a Star Wars universe, probably give your characters a ship so they can fly to other biomes easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Otherwise, it's gonna be boring if the whole campaign is in Tatooine and you're in a desert. Right. But you do bring up a good point. It would be awesome as a DM if you do play in a Star Wars universe to set it in one planet. Once the party levels up or gets to a certain level where you think it's okay for them to leave, then all of a sudden you change the entire terrain uh, and then you can throw them into Hoth, you know, or like... That could even be like the first minor story arc is getting a ship to get off this planet. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Like that could be the whole goal of the characters in the first few levels or whatever. Yeah, because at, at the very beginning, your party is going to be very vulnerable to pretty much everything. Oh, yeah. Um, and... and and yeah, having a simple goal like just buying a ship or, or getting a ship would be interesting. Mm-hmm. And that also raises the question, too, of if you are starting at a at a certain planet, that's going to limit the races that you could be. Yeah, yeah. It's like, true. why would you have, I forget what they're called, but the guys from Dathomir, essentially Darth oh, Maul's yeah. race. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Why would they be Zabrex. on a path? Yeah. yeah, that's true. Um. But then at the same time, you could have a situation like the cantina scene where you had, mm-hmm. like, a uh, fucking werewolf. <laughs> <laughs> the devil um, guy. <laughs> yeah. Um, which we saw in, yeah. oh, spoiler mm-hmm. alert, in yeah. The Mandalorian episode six or some shit. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you could have a, a planet where it's just a way station. Like, people, people from all over the galaxy come here to refuel, to do whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's up to your party to find the... Uh, the ship or the easiest way in my opinion is you're a party of bounty hunters yes you're going to hunt your quarry and you guys decided let's work together split the earnings maybe you're part of the guild that the mandalorian was in yeah have a cameo or maybe you do see the mandalorian and you also have to kind of decide what era of star wars you're playing true in. true are you playing in the clone wars era are you mm-hmm. playing in the imperial era or these new movies after the empire were there's not as much as an imperial presence around. Mm-hmm. What would you guys feel has the most resource for you to take from? What era? I personally think if I were to run it, it would be Clone Wars era. Just because if people play magic users, you could spin that as using the force. Mm-hmm. And there's not there's not a lot of uh, force After. users that are yeah. still alive in these other eras. So I'd probably use that one. That, makes that sense. does seem to be the safe yeah. play. Because um, in other areas, you may not have Jedi. I guess it also depends what your characters want or what your players want to play. True. If they all want to play things that aren't magic users, then you can easily. It'd be because I, I think it'd be a lot of fun to play in the Imperial era or the First Order era, just because it's a more gritty. If it mm-hmm. feels like from the tone of the movies. Yeah. But if you have a bunch of wizards and sorcerers and warlocks and stuff like that, then it might be easier to go another route. Yeah. Right. And that also makes me think of the big problem with the uh, online version of like the uh, Star Wars universe. I forget what it's called. Where like it's basically uh, World of Warcraft, but in the Star Wars universe. Is it Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah. The big problem was that everybody wanted to be a Jedi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If, if you are uh, running a Star Wars theme campaign, all your magic users must have high uh metachlorian counts oh god and they're <laughs> and they're on their way to becoming jedi but they don't even know they just know that they can somehow manipulate uh energies in in the world and and you know they are force users without even knowing mm-hmm. so maybe the whole thing is like they are all bounty hunters that are very successful because of the fact that they can use magic well the force the force and then um the story arc becomes like, well, why can I use the force? 
what is up with my Mandalorian or what's <laughs> Metaclorian? Metaclorian. Ma- my Mandalorian count. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought of a really cool like arc if your characters are playing uh, for, quote unquote force users. Yeah. In the Imperial side or the Imperial um, era oh, is yeah. have like Vader learns of your presence and he's Ooh. hunting you down. Like yeah. your characters are gonna know that they can't kill kill Vader. Yeah. So that'd be a that'd be so like having like the end of Rogue One. Mm-hmm. You could have that in your game and like your players like oh, this is this is Darth Vader. We're not gonna be able to fight this guy. We gotta get out of here. Right. We're level one. It's your big baddie <laughs> that's coming after you. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's just constantly a threat that he knows you exist and he wants you dead because that's his job is to kill a Jedi. Yeah. And maybe you learn to fight, you know, force wielders by fighting like the Inquisitors and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah that'd be dope. Yeah. Uh, that's basically what the uh, Rebel series is, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. All right, who's gonna DM? Not it. <laughs> I'll DM. Dude, I've been I've thing, been dying. The to thing DM. about this is, I want to DM because I have so many cool ideas, but I also want to be a part of those yeah, cool I ideas. Want to be a Jedi. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think if I were to be in a Star Wars era campaign, I definitely would want to be a droid. Really? That's cool. I don't think a lot of people would want to be a droid. Mm-hmm. I think it would be fun to roleplay a droid. Yeah. Because you're very like... You just uh, got to whistle and beep. That's it. Beep. Well, <laughs> not only that, but you have to be... You have to have a certain mindset of like there Because you're programmed for a certain thing. Yeah. And that's your thing. Now, would you play a droid as like you yourself or would you be connected to like a giant hive mind? Um, because it makes me think of we talked about this before, but those uh, lizard people. What are they? Not not the lizard people, but the the other ones, the ones with the snake tail. Yanti. Yanti, mm-hmm. where they have like a hive mind, and as a robot, maybe you are connected somehow to all the other assassin droids. Uh, how would you like to play though? Oh, uh, definitely, I'd want to be like a. What is it? what's c3po he's like a protocol droid protocol droid where i, I don't fight i just like oh i have six thousand languages you know what's can translate for you i love you because like if anybody wanted to play a droid they would want to be k2so mm-hmm. or like uh the one from knights of the old republic that's like a killer droid or whatever yeah. you want to play c3po <laughs> yeah it's like a just the support like, oh, character. heavens where are we <laughs> but you would be a, oh you know i when i see him i see a a healer he would be the healer in the group. I'm not gonna heal. Or the like the <laughs> diplomat, like you're trying to, you're the charismatic one trying right. to be a get through situations through talking mm-hmm. rather than, yeah, yeah. that's um, so cool. <laughs> or or the one from yeah, there's so many cooler droids that you could have picked from. The fact yeah. you chose C3PO was awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna be BB-8 and uh, pilot a what is it? 18? Basically a like reskinned gnome, yeah. like a small <laughs> little thing. And then we can put up put on our red hats and armbands and beat you up. <laughs> You could. Yeah. I mean, the First Order had armbands. That's right? true. Mm-hmm. Um, but then that does go to show that there are many um, different styles of playing in that world. And you really have to tell your group, hey, don't be the Jedi. Everybody's going to be the Jedi. Be be something else. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unless you want to run a Jedi game. But mm-hmm. if you're definitely if you're playing in the Imperial era or the First Order era, there's not going to be four Jedi's running around because that's going to draw some attention. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, what other classes do you think you guys could fit into the uh, Star Wars universe without it connecting to Jedi? Um, I think Barbarian mm-hmm. works pretty well. Anything that's... I mean, it's hard because in 5th edition, pretty much every class has access to magic in mm-hmm. some way or another. Maybe just not use mas- magic for this campaign because yeah. it's gonna be really hard to be like, how are you using Eldritch Blast? Like, or unless you can reskin it somehow. Yeah. But well, I do think that as a blaster a, shot, <laughs> you do have to. Yeah, yeah, you're you're actually right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you Eldritch, get, Eldritch Blaster. <laughs> yeah. You know. Um, but yeah, I do think that making magic uh, use. It has to be something special. It means that when, you know, if you are a wizard and you use some type of magic weapon, uh, the group or the, or the the people around the battle must, like, freak out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because there's a guy moving things or causing lightning to come, you know, from from his hands and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, like we see in The Mandalorian when, uh, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, <laughs> when Baby Yoda uses the Force to uh, lift, lift that up that, thing. that mud rhino thing, mm-hmm. the Mandalorian's like, I have no idea what he did. Like, he doesn't have knowledge of the Force. Right. Because yeah. it's pretty far after 
Jedi were... 30 years after episode four, I believe. Or no. I know it's five years after Return of the Jedi. There you go. Whatever that means. I don't know the exact timeline. Um, but there's not a lot of Jedi around, so people don't really know about it. Yeah, but the point is to like make that magic use special to the group. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. is something rare, and I don't think that even in like the D&D world, they often do, right? Magic is normal in the D&D yeah, world. For yeah. the most part, yeah. Yeah. So so making your, your force use uh, something that could be a, a problem. So like if you do have magic users, you know, give them the that warning that hey, like if you do that in a place where people are going to see you, bad things will happen. Right. Maybe since you let's say you are playing, you know, a party of bounty hunters, it's like hey, this guy can do the use the force. That's gonna get me a pretty good bounty. Yeah. If you want to play That's a bounty true. hunters game, yeah. it can be the reverse of the Vader game. The empire's like hey, if you force there's force users bring them into us we'll pay you a bunch right. so you're a bunch of bounty hunters hunting down fledgling jedis mm-hmm. <laughs> be awesome yeah and then the other awesome part about playing in a world that already has a fixed um like life to it uh, is that you can uh mess with the politics of that uh era that you're playing in yeah uh, you each player that sits at that table is gonna have uh, knowledge of the Star Wars world to begin with, so you, so you creating the world, or it it it, uh, it makes it easier for the DM to create a world because the world already yeah, exists and they know about it. Your and your players are going to know about it too, so yeah. they're already well, most likely, so they're already invested. You don't got to like have this give them a packet and say this is my exactly. world. Read yeah. up on it so you know how to yeah. act in mm-hmm. my world. It's Star Wars. Everybody knows about Star Wars. Yeah. yeah. It'd be really great if you're playing in the Clone Wars era and you're a party of all stormtroopers and yeah, you hit too. like level 10 and then you hear execute, execute order 66. That'd be really that amazing. Be re- the huge dilemma. Oh, that would be so cool. Oh, yeah. And depending like which Jedi you're like assigned to, it's like, oh, so like if you're fighting against like Obi-Wan, it's like, yeah, you know, you're not going to kill him, but still mm-hmm. you're fighting against Obi-Wan. Yeah. Would you guys actually try to create, um, named characters to follow the party or would you guys try to create your own like jedi i think it'd make more sense to be your own thing yeah Mm, okay because if you're playing a named character like say if you're playing anakin that's really gonna railroad yeah you kind of have plot armor yeah unless you're Mm -hmm. doing an alternate universe type thing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh but that yeah that does spark ideas of like having the jedi that follows the party along helps them out and then all of a sudden, you have to make the decision of killing this Jedi, or being like the, because uh, because there were some There's star, a few. stormtroopers that didn't do it right. Yeah, I Commander so. Rex. A- a- yeah, Anakin's dudes. I think in Clone Wars they said that there was like a chip in them that forced them to do it or something like that. Yeah. Some of them removed it though, right? Yeah, that was yeah. the whole point. Um, oh, that could be the whole like mystery behind, um, like w- like you can make that chip a thing. Yeah. Um, and then slowly like plant the seeds and then once the the party like catches on it's like okay now our mission is to get rid of this yeah there's so many different places you can plug in to the story just the mm-hmm. main story of star wars and kind of mm-hmm. have little side missions that are a whole campaign right yeah and then also playing in the star wars universe gives you the ability if you are the type of person that likes to reskin things uh, maybe you even have a party of people who know the monster manual inside and out uh, reskilling, reskinning certain uh, monsters like that one that Baby Baby Yoda picked up the yeah. giant rhino dude, um, reskinning that and making cool monsters for you to fight. Uh, it would be just like a a whole game in it itself. Mm-hmm. I want to fight fun. a rancor. That'd be like a Baralagra or what's that thing Baralgura. called? Baralgura. Baralgura. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just switching switching it up and then using. Because there are force-using monsters, right? Yeah. There has to be. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. No, there are. Because, I mean, if you think about it, every living thing is just a monster in the eyes of somebody else. Sure. Yeah. Um, what are the things would you guys, like, special... Would you guys ever do a special, like, one-shot? Um, I think this would be... I mean, it'd be really easy to do a one-shot. Or mm-hmm. it would be easier to do a one-shot rather mm-hmm. than a whole campaign. Or like a short 
no, not necessarily a one shot, but like a short little arc. Right. Because then you could end it on the on Order sixty six or some other iconic moment in Star Wars, mm-hmm. and oh, it's like imagine the last session and you're like execute Order sixty six and we're like oh my god this is, we're here we did that we were there mm-hmm. when this happened in yeah. some way. It'd just be it'd be cool to like make that reveal at the end of the the short one shot. I think it would kind of cheapen the experience if you kept playing after Order Order sixty six. Yeah. That's just me. No, I get it. Yeah, it'd be really interesting. Like, there's so many cameos you could do in this. I think that's the thing that really brings you more into the world, where you're not just playing some one shot off in some world. It's like, oh, like Vader's around, and you know, all these characters that we all enjoy could come in at any time. Yeah, and you get to practice your Yoda voice. Yeah, (laughs) that's true. It's the perfect time to do it. Yeah, but let's be right. If you're gonna be C three O. Misa going to play Chow Chow Pinks. (laughs) (laughs) I would stop playing that campaign. (laughs) Just for the fact that it would get annoying after the first five minutes. We were all Gungans. (laughs) God, that would be so awful. They have a cool world, though. Roger, Roger. Mm -hmm. They have a cool world. They do. Yeah, it's not even a world. It's just underneath a lake. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's really it just is. a lake. Look at all those big fish things. There's always a bit. There's always true. a bigger fish. That's true. Yeah, oh, you can play that one uh, Kit Fisto guy. Yeah, he's he's cool. I play the guy with the things and the <laughs> does the flying. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> that does rem- that does. M- it also gives like special vehicle, like so if you if because the the big thing about Star Wars is that you have ships, and then you make them your own. The yeah. Mandalorian has his like special. Uh, uh, was it called the Crest or something like Razor that? Crest? Yeah. yeah. Um, whereas, he, you you do get to create your own transport, and that could just be a whole little story arc in itself. Oh, dude! Imagine all the like the dog fights you could have yeah that you'd w- have to make your own rules oh, and everything that would be so cool fighting up in space and yeah maybe that's how it starts you fight and then you get crash land on a planet and i know in uh, one of the newer supplements that uh wizards came out with there's rules for naval battles and i wonder how easily they would plug into like to changing it to ship like naval? airship battles like belly button battles yeah okay yeah it's like the innies versus the outies yeah <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah. Um, another cool thing or interesting thing that you guys made me think about is um, like when you're doing a narrative campaign in 40k, you int- <laughs> you you introduce different um, elements of different games. So like uh, you could be playing 40k and then also Battlefleet Gothic, and then you yeah, like just play X Wing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's that. That's the point that that'd, I was trying to get. Yeah. yeah, that'd be kind of cool. So as a break, like, okay, we're done with the whole role playing aspect of it. Let's play X Wing. Right. You get to a point where you're a ship battle. Let's break out the the star map and yeah, and play play with the actual models and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, that would be cool. And I feel like it's a lot easier to find Star Wars minis. Oh yeah. Instead of like trying to find my tiefling ranger with one eye and a peg leg and all this <laughs> yeah. well the only problem with that is that you we have places like Forge or hero forge right yeah sure. whereas like, like exactly with star wars nah, you probably have to play like a name character and then you have to kit bash them that's true which usually yeah. for the D D groups kit bashing isn't really like a thing it's not we yeah. should kit bash a cool D character but then that also brings up the the point of like um if you are the type of DM that likes to do terrain, finding kits and stuff, you can go to Walmart and find Star Wars toys that yeah. you can use for D and D. Whereas, like, or you can use for Star Wars. Whereas in like regular D and D, it's kind of harder to find terrain. You gotta be more creative. I'm also, or build it yourself. I'm also curious how well like Lego Star Wars ships scale with like D and D. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Cause that'd yeah. be kind of cool to. On the, on the table to have the, the Millennium Falcon. Yeah. Oh, we can't play this week, guys. I'm only halfway done yeah. building. <laughs> or yeah, or somehow like mash together your own ship. Mm-hmm. We've had a DM that used Legos, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it's. A, I mean, it's a nice, cool way to. Yeah, it's easy. Visual, yeah. Modular. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Build your own terrain. So there's a lot of benefits to playing in a Star Wars universe or 
playing D and D in a Star Wars universe. And I'm pretty sure there's even supplements, right, that you can purchase. I've seen a lot of like homebrew stuff for Star Wars for D and D. Yeah, it's it's a really popular mm-hmm. universe yeah. to play in. So, yeah. but there's also other RPG games that are Star Wars. So if you really didn't want to go through the effort of reskinning uh, D and D, you could learn a whole new system, which I have not done. <laughs> like, well, what are what are they? I know uh, Galaxy's Edge. I think no, that's the that's the thing in Disney. <laughs> yeah, it's a theme park. Uh, I don't know. I can't remember the names off the top of my head, but I think there's at least two. Okay. That are yeah. kind of, there's like there's one that's more D six instead of a D twenty system, and mm. so go to your lo- lo- local hobby shop, and yeah. they'll probably have Just a little blank check for Star out Wars. The, yeah, learn mm-hmm. how to play that. I kind of want to do that. We should get into other RPGs. RPGs, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, Dark, D- Heresy, Dark Heresy, Dark Heresy. Warhammer 40K, Age of Sigmar, and yeah. D&D is not expensive enough. You need to well, get into the cool more. thing about role-playing is that it's not expensive yeah, at that's all. The thing, it's yeah. true. You yeah. just show up. Even like Blackstone Fortress. You buy the Blackstone. One person needs to buy Blackstone Fortress, mm-hmm. and bam, everybody can play. And that's what I was going to say. If we wanted to get into a new RPG, only, we could all go in on a book, and yeah. then we can all use it. Ooh, you know? a book. Ooh. Ugh. That's the benefit, though, of, of playing in a universe that are, already exists. Yeah. Right. But the easy, I mean, it's it's easy enough to reskin in D&D that you don't really have to branch out to these other systems. Mm-hmm. But if you want to. You can. Yeah. Now, I mean, we're talking about getting a whole different game system to play Star Wars and D&D. But it's, like you said, it's just as easy as reskinning it. Like, for example, say you want to play Darth Maul. Boom. Tiefling fits that. Pretty good. Yeah, check out our last episode. Oh yeah, for you more in depth. Yeah, last Thursday. Mm-hmm. If you want to see how to make Darth Maul up to level three, check it out. So we kind of hinted at it earlier, but what classes? I know we said barbarian, but then we kind of got off off track. I think the rogue. I mean, easy Han Solo yeah. smuggler yep. type, mm-hmm. and you can go. There's a bunch of different subclasses that don't use any magic, so that's always good. Mm-hmm. Um, fighter, obviously. So I'm having a hard time envisioning it, but do you guys think that you can make a druid work in Star Wars? E- Ewoks, yeah, of course. Ewoks would be druid because they're all, I mean, they're not technologically advanced. So I feel like you could be like, oh, I make a stick with an Aishalele to make it stronger. What about the whole sh- turning into animals thing? Mm. The well, werewolf. <laughs> in that cantina scene. Well, yeah, that and uh, yeah, because it, there's I'm, just literal werewolves in Star Wars. I'm pretty sure there are shapeshifters in the Star Wars universe. Oh, there there are there are. We the, did see a changeling. Assassin. Yeah, yeah. So so doing something like that wouldn't be that difficult. And also connecting it to the like if as a druid you think of like almost like a shaman and he's connected to the nature and all that kind of stuff. That's that screams out the force. Yeah. Like, you are just connected to nature, which nature is connected to the Force a lot in a more primitive way, I guess you could say. Uh, whereas, um, you can be a Force user, because obviously druids you use magic, um, but at the same time, you are not a... You do not follow the Jedi way, but you are still connected to the Force somehow. And maybe your ancestors connected to the Force a different way than the Jedi did. Sure. Um, and, and you can reskin it that way. Uh, and then that gives the you and the DM the opportunity to add your own little twist to the Force within a universe. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, green grass and mm-hmm. trees and squirrels. That's true. Even if you think about it, Yoda in the original trilogy was kind of like the hermit in the woods. Yeah. Yeah. He went to exile, more in tune with nature, you could say. Yeah. Uh, I think I was going to ask the same thing about clerics and paladins. But I mean the force. Mm-hmm. The cleric one is a little tough because have we ever seen any force Gods. user just heal? No, but just heal. Like oh, I thought you meant like praising to a god. I to... don't think there's like because when I think a uh, cleric, maybe it's just because of the way that most clerics play in our previous uh, games. But they they always seem to be just the natural ability to heal, mm-hmm. and I've never seen a uh, a Jedi pull like something from the Hobbit where like they lay on hands and yeah. all of a sudden boom they're better that's true um so that might be a little tougher because it doesn't exist in the star wars universe uh, but then you could just reskin that and say well here are some uh, back to uh, yeah medicine thing something yeah um but i think that that would be a little forced i would say yeah uh, you're definitely it. gonna have to work to fit 
It doesn't fit. D and D doesn't fit perfectly into Star Wars. Yeah. You're gonna have to file down the edges to make it fit into that round hole. With your square peg. But that's just because it's a fantasy world, and you right. gotta, you gotta, you gotta make some. You gotta bow down to some of these things. Where like rogue and right. fighters are like super easy to fit in because they're just generic yeah. warrior types or rogue types, which mm-hmm. are in everything. Now, um, you did sorcerer really well. Um, wizard was done. How would you guys do um, the the other guy? No, you did warlock. I did warlock. Yeah. How would you guys fit sorcerer into? Without connecting it to Jedi. That's that's the thing. I feel like it's more... That's kind of really good for Jedi. Because it's a natural born... Your midichlorians or whatever. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I think whenever you get like the wizard, the sorcerer, anybody that uses magic, it, it makes the most sense doing the force. It's like nothing else really ties in too well. Yeah, even in the Clone Wars, whenever there's been some type of magical thing, it's connected to the Force. Mm-hmm. So it's hard to kind of... It's hard to get away from that when you're in, playing in a Star Wars universe. Mm-hmm. Unless you want to reskin everything heavily into more technological. Right. Like if you want... Like like we said earlier, how Eldritch Blast is a blaster. You could do stuff like that. Yeah. Like make your spells, describe them in a way where everything is technical comes from technology rather than the force but that means you'd have to play somebody more technologically advanced such as a bounty hunter or a droid yes instead of doing like uh what's that one thing burning hands you're firing a flamethrower yeah easy stuff like that Mm -hmm. now as a do you think that's more work for the dm i think it's more work for the player right to make it work if you want to play a highly or a high spell casting person you have to Take and you the don't time. want it to be a Jedi. Right, and you have to take the time to reskin everything. Yeah, I it, think that's on you, not the DM. As a DM, not you just got to okay. say whether or not you approve with certain mm-hmm. things and disapprove something. You can work with the DM, but right. I think on the most part, it's on the player to reskin things. Okay. Cool thing for like Find Familiar it could be like a little probe droid that you send mm-hmm. out. You can. It's definitely there. Like you can do it, but it takes more imagination than just like to reskin everything even further than what we've been talking about already. Right. To turn magic into not magic, basically. And that's like the one of the hardest things to do, because if you're if you're if you've been playing D and D for so long and it's like, oh, I cast a web. It's like obviously it's it's a web. Like what else would it be? And then that's when you gotta like think outside the box. And it's like, oh, well, I threw a grappling hook or, mm-hmm. or a sticky net. Yeah, there's an oil slick or something yeah. like that. Yeah, but, there is that advantage with Star Wars that it is very sci-fi fantasy. Yeah, there's the technology technology is so advanced. Mm-hmm. It's not super hard to imagine something like that existing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It or doesn't, if, doesn't take you out. Doesn't uh, take you out of suspension of disbelief. Right. To, or just don't use that thing. Like let's say you really want to be a sorcerer for a certain thing, but you have all these other spells that don't really make much sense to you. Just don't use them. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. Then. And you get to pick your spells. Right. So you can kind of pick ones that are e- more easily reskinable. Mm-hmm. And if you can't, let's work, ask the DM, ask the other players around you for help trying to figure out how to reskin something. Right. Or maybe it's not you yourself that's doing the thing. Maybe it's like, oh, the bad guy tripped and he fell. That's sure. why he's stuck in his in the web or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about creativity, guys. And with Star Wars, they give you more than enough content, abilities, lore to make it work. And that's the fun of it. As a DM, you're not creating this whole world. Everything's already there for you. You're just making it fit with the campaign. Yeah, you get to focus on the story rather mm-hmm. than like making sure everything fits in the world. Right. Or building the world. If you know everybody's going to want to play a Jedi, obviously play during like the Clone Wars where yep. there's the most action and you yep. actually have Jedi to pick from. Yep. Um, comment down below. Let us know if you've played any of these um, Star Wars role playing games. If you guys have done any special scenarios for your um, Star Wars themed campaign, comment down in the comment section below. And if you guys would like us to cover any other um, any other universes that we can reskin to fit D and D, let us know. Um, Marvel, perhaps. Yeah, that would be fun. A superhero campaign. I feel like that would be a lot harder to reskin. Maybe not. I mean, you're basically a superhero. And we'll, we, can, we can get into it in another video. Yeah. 
But comment down in the comment section below. Let us know, and we will talk to you guys uh, pretty soon. Remember, we do this uh, every Thursday, so tune in uh, for next Thursday. This is Gersh One. The Sound Alchemist. And Docile Creature. And we are signing out. <laughs>